Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. In this tutorial, let's talk about data normalization in Power BI. Now what exactly does data normalization mean? Data normalization is basically a process to organize the data in your database so that it's easier to work with and also get rid of redundant data that you have in your database. Let's say for example, I have the sales table with me in Power BI. I have the order IDs, the order date, and then I also have the customer ID information like customer ID, customer name, customer address, phone number, etc. And then I also have some product details here, product name, product category, product brand, etc. Now as an example, let me choose one of the customer here. Let me choose the first customer here and click on OK. For this particular customer ID, the customer name, address and the phone number is repeating in the database as many times as he has placed the order. Now this is the redundant data that I was talking about. Now you could have a separate dimension table which contains the customer information which will just appear once and then you can join those two tables and bring in or repeat the data as many times as you want. But in this case, you are having multiple rows of data which basically means that the data is redundant, it is occupying more space in your database, it is also going to affect the performance of your database. Now, likewise, I also have the product IDs, I have the product name, product category. For this particular customer, I just have four different rows here. Now I filter for a particular product ID and you can see that the product name, product category and the product brand is repeating over and over again as many times as the customer has placed an order. Now this is again the redundant data that I'm talking about. Now let us see how we can normalize the data here in Power BI using Power Query. So let's get started with this tutorial. Let's head over to the Power Query editor. I'm going to go into the Transform tab and click on Transform Data here. This will take me to the Power Query editor. Now what I will now do is I'm going to duplicate this particular table here two times so that I have one table for customer information. I have another table for the product information. And now for the sales table, let me quickly rename this. I'm going to call this as fact underscore sales. So this is my fact table or the transaction table which will hold all the key information related to my data. And then I have the sales two here, the duplicated table of course. In this table, I'm going to get rid of all the columns that I don't need here, for example, or I would like to keep only those columns that I need in my customer table. So first of all, let's quickly right click here and rename this. And let's call this table dim underscore customer and then let me select all of the customer related information here that is from customer ID all the way till customer phone and then I'm going to right click here and select remove other columns and I would like to just have my customer details in here and now in the home tab let's go to the remove rows section and select remove duplicates once the duplicate rows have been removed you are now left with just 20 customer IDs here and notice that this is how clean the table looks like and now you can simply create a join with your fact table and now let's head to the third table that we have here which is the sales 3 I'm going to right click here and call this as dim underscore product click on enter and now I'm going to select all of the columns here related to product or from product ID all the way till product brand. Let's right click, repeat the same process which says remove other columns. I'm going to click on this and now we have a clean table. Let's quickly go to remove rows section and select remove duplicates and now I have a very clean table which just has the product information. I have the product ID, product name, product category and product brand. Notice that we don't have any duplicates in our table and it's looking really clean. The data is not redundant now and we have a primary key as well, which is the product ID. In this case, it is the customer ID. This is the key that we can use to join with our fact table. And now let me click on close and apply. And now that the data is loaded, let's head over to the modeling tab. And this is where we will create relationships between the dimension tables and the fact table. So I'm going to create a relationship between the dim product here. I'm going to just join the product ID with the product ID in the fact sales table. And then this is going to be a one to many relationship. In case if you have duplicate rows here, the cardinality will change. This will turn into many to many. And that is something that you will have to avoid. Make sure that this is one to many relationship and then click on save. Your relationship has been created between your product table and the fact sales table. Likewise, we will repeat the same process here for the customers as well. I can now simply create a relationship using the customer ID field. One to many relationship has been created between the fact sales table and the dim customer table and now you can click on save. 
we now have created a star schema in here, which basically has a fact sales table and two dimension tables. And if you have more dimension tables, you can simply keep repeating the process here and create the relationship with the fact table. And now that I have created this relationship, now let's head over to our report view. And what I can now do is, we actually missed one of the process. So let's head back into the Power Query editor. Let's go into our fact sales table and now make sure that you remove all the customer related information and the product related information from our fact table so that we don't have duplicate data in here. So I'm gonna select customer name, customer address, customer phone. The reason why I'm not removing customer ID is because we need the customer ID to create the relationship. Remember that we have used the customer ID field to create the relationship between the customer ID field in the fact table and the customer ID field in the dim customer table. So I'm just gonna select these three columns. These are the three columns that were redundant here. I'm gonna get rid of them so that they are not repeated. I'm gonna simply right click here and select remove columns. Likewise, I'm gonna repeat the same here with the product fields that I have, product name, product category, and product brand. I'm gonna right click and select remove columns. Make sure that you don't click on remove other columns. And now that I have customer ID, product ID, I have sales region, quantity, price, etc. I only have the information that I need in my fact table and my rest of the tables here, customer and product, will hold all the details, relevant details there. And now I can simply click on close and apply. And you can see that our fact table is now reduced to just a few columns. And now what I can do is I can simply bring in the order ID. And against the order ID, if you'd like to know who's the customer who has purchased or what's the name of the customer who has purchased that particular product, you can simply go into your Tim customer table and bring in the customer name into this particular table and you have the customer names appearing against every single order ID. Likewise, if you would like to know what is the product that particular order ID contains, you can simply bring in the product name from the DIM product table into your table in here and you will see that you have the product name against all of these order IDs. So the entire process that we just went through is basically called data normalization and it is very common, especially when you have redundant data in your database. So that's it guys in this particular tutorial. I hope you guys were able to follow and understand the process of data normalization. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.